Good morning everyone. In today's video we're going to talk about hair cutting, particularly this chart. Now if you have this edition of the textbook, it's on page 363. If you have the newer edition of the textbook, which a few people do have already, it's on page 249. It's the same picture, same numbers, nothing has changed. But before we talk about that, we need to talk for a moment about the actual test scores themselves. Now, you know in some states you need 75 to pass your test, in some states you only need 70. I'm talking about the percentage of people who pass, not the score. I owned a school and managed it for about 25 years. And for most of those years, the pass rate across the country was right around 70%. I know this from my own school, thousands of students over two decades, and many state board meetings and talking to hundreds of teachers over the years. In the last five years, we've seen the results go way down. They went from 75 to 65 to 60 to 55. And everyone, teachers, school directors, students, explain this away by saying, oh, it's COVID. You know, everything was COVID. It was such a convenient excuse for everything. Well, it's COVID. The students are not in school. They're on Zoom. They're not learning as well. And you know, there's probably some truth in that. I wouldn't dispute it. But most states opened their schools a year ago. So most of the students failing the test now have been in school all year. The pass rate nationally for cosmetologists in the first three months of 2023 was 51%. In other words, out of every 100 people that took the test, 51 passed, 49 failed. You spent a year in school and somewhere between eight and $25,000 and half the room cannot pass the test every day. Now, everyone is quick to blame somebody else. Okay? Some people tell me, well, the test is getting much harder. And I will tell you that is true. Over the 40 years I've had my license and the 25 years with the school, I can tell you the test is getting much harder every single year. But that's not the whole story. Okay? Because half the room is still passing. People will say, it's the teachers. They don't teach, they're no good, they don't know anything. Surprisingly, it's the students that fail the test that say the teacher didn't know anything. And you know what, quite honestly, a lot of teachers don't know very much. I had a lot of teachers over the years I had to let go. They either didn't know the material or they knew it, but they couldn't teach it. Knowing it is one thing, teaching it is a different thing. And finally, we talked to a lot of teachers, many worked for me over the years, teachers, inevitably say this, the students don't pay attention, they're very argumentative, they don't want to know anything except what they want to know, they don't believe when I tell them, even though you might not be interested in, example, permanent waving, it's on the test. They're argumentative, they're disruptive, they're playing on their phones, they're texting, they don't pay any attention, and they fail the test. All of those things are true. Some of the teachers are not very good. Some of the students are very disruptive and don't pay attention, and the test is harder. But you can't change any of that. You have to live with it. Right? We're gonna talk today to the half of the room that really wants to know what's on the test. One of the heavily tested areas is hair cutting. Now everyone thinks, oh, I know all about hair cutting. Until they fail their test, they get that sheet that breaks down what you did on each section, and one of the worst sections for almost everyone is hair cutting. There's about seven to 10 hair cutting questions that come out of this chart right behind me. And as I said, if you have the new version of the book, you'll find it on page 249. If you have the edition a couple of years older that most students still are using, page 363. I'll go over this slowly and I encourage you to take notes and watch this video several times because you're going to see these questions anywhere between seven and 10 questions, which is roughly 10% of your whole test. Okay? To begin with, you have right here, zero degree elevation. Now, what does the test say about zero degree elevation? They say it's a low elevation. It is used essentially for one haircut, the blunt haircut, B-L-U-N-T, the blunt haircut. Now your book calls it a blunt haircut, it also calls it a page boy, a bob, like the man's name, a B-O-B, -B, or a solid form. Blunt, page boy, bob, solid form. All the same haircut. Zero degree elevation, a low elevation. It is done using a stationary guideline. 
cutting below your fingers. Now, cutting above the fingers or below the fingers is largely a preference. I've known great hair cutters that did it both ways. But this particular haircut requires you to cut it below your fingers, even if you're like me and not inclined to cut below the fingers. I feel much better cutting above. But this haircut, blunt, bob, page boy, solid form, whatever you want to call it, requires you to cut below your fingers. Next, we come to the 45 degree elevation. This is the most common elevation used in women's haircutting. It gives you what is called a graduated cut. Now, no matter which textbook you're in, it tells you six times that 45 degrees gives you a graduated cut. If it tells you something six times, you can be pretty sure it's gonna be on the test. So, 45 degree elevation. It's a medium elevation. It's the most common elevation for women's hair cuttings. It creates what's called a graduated cut. And it's also the, the degree that you will generally use for razor cutting. The test will ask you, why would you razor cut someone's hair? Well, the obvious answer is that's what they asked for. But that's not a test option. The test says you would use a razor cut to create feathered ends, a softer, more feminine look. They like the word feathered, both in the textbook and on the test. You move over here to 90 degree elevation. <clears throat> this is called a high elevation. It is the most common elevation on men's hair cutting. It creates uniform layers. It will use both the stationary guideline and the traveling guideline. So again, 90 degree elevation, the most common elevation for men's hair cutting, uses both traveling and stationary guidelines, creates a uniform layered look. The other thing about 90 degrees, there will be a state board test question that says, cutting below 90 degrees, not at 90 degrees, below, from 89 down, cutting below 90 degrees will achieve what? You will be building weight in the haircut. Cutting from 90 degrees and above, you are reducing weight. Below 90, you're building weight, 90 and above, you're adding, you're reducing weight. Finally, there's 180 degrees. That's the easy one. It's long layers. 180 degrees, long layers. Typically, it's a young woman with long hair. She wants long layers, 180 degrees. There is, as I said, between seven and 10 questions right here. You need to know these things. Now, make sure you watch all our videos, 2023 cosmetology exam questions and answers, but also watch the 2023 barber exam questions and answers because something that most students don't seem to realize. The tests are almost identical, barber and cosmetology. Here's the difference. The barbers will be asked about shaving. You will not. You will be asked about hair removal and makeup. The barbers will not. But the other chapters, infection control, facials, hair color, chemical services, permanent waving, chemical relaxers, hair cutting, blow drying, styling, they're all the same questions. You cannot tell whether you're taking a barber or a cosmetology test. I know I've taken them both many times, sometimes deliberately to fail just to take it again so I could see what was on it. Right? I passed it in seven states, my teaching credential in three states. I've taken this test a lot of times and I'm telling you what's on the test. Now make sure you watch our videos, 2023 cosmetology exam questions and answers, 2023 barber exam questions and answers. Visit our website, there's several free practice tests there, www.cosmetologystateboardexam.com. Cosmetologystateboardexam.com. Give us a call if you have any questions, 760-534-4434. We do private tutoring. You will pass your test, I guarantee it. At the end of this video, make sure you go down below and hit subscribe and give us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. For those of you taking your test in a day or two, as I say in Broadway, break a leg, which is supposed to bring you good luck. And we'll hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you.